everybody. So, uh, the GM has been trying to run some new interesting combats, but unfortunately his brain's too fried. So every combat just takes place in the same long hallway and it's just kill all the enemies. And there's no like cover or anything interesting. It's just like some badly drawn lines on a grid. And like, it's the same hallway every time, nothing changes. And eventually, uh, all the characters got really tired of this and started to fight. And the GM freaked out and flipped the table. Now sessions, that's just canceled. It's a horde mode now. Welcome back, everybody, to the sessions canceled podcast, where Xfinity is no longer screwing me by just not having any any internet I, for the I, week. I, I don't know about. I would argue they're screwing you a little bit less. I mean, yeah, yeah, correct. They're screwing me less. I don't know about they not at least at all. had the yeah look they they at the very least had the decency to let me know before they were going to blow it all over my back so like yeah oh tasty mm. that's yep. yeah yeah uh, no I have no follow up I just yep okay I'm just checking just checking yeah I, I had to make it visceral in in the graphic yeah the, well, yeah it should so, accomplish uh, <laughs> I mean, I could have made it worse, but I was like, no, let's not. Let's no, not. yeah, no, let's not. That's no. <laughs> Weird sexualities are usually your thing. I can't step on your toes too much. I, I don't, I don't like the implication there. The implication that you yourself have set multiple times on yeah, recording. I, s- I don't like it. I still don't like it. You know what I'm saying, not, not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> I can't, who could have done this? It's just the fucking Eric Andre shooting <laughs> Animal Verse. <thing. laughs> Except the Animal Verse is just another Eric Andre in the chair. <laughs> I can't believe they've done this. That's fair. Who could have done this? Me to me. <laughs> it's an evil Kermit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Welcome back to the Sessions Canceled podcast. Uh, it's me, Isaiah. I'm here with Josh. I, I'm here. I am a thing. I, I breathe. I live. You are a thing, yeah? All right, Voltaire. (laughs) Tell me, why do you fight? Tell me, champion of (laughs) Eosia! Why do you fight? Can you imagine if (laughs) Caius just did the, why do you come? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I'm sure that that there has to be some variation of that line somewhere. Fourteen definitely oh has some cum memes for sure. There's no way it doesn't. <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we're gonna follow. We're fi- uh, so first of all, we're done with the 2024 class stuff. Thank God, it was really killing us by the end. Plus, plus the books are uh, out now, so y'all bitches can read it your goddamn selves. Yeah, you can read it your damn self. Correct. Oh, you know um, what? I, 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 did I tell you about what happened with the with the getting getting one of the books situation? Did I? No, please. You want me. the story time on that one? Um, so I was I went out to get one, you know, to get the the I wanted to get the alt cover player's handbook, right? And I <laughs> went out to get it yesterday. Uh, I do not have it in my possession right now. Uh, because I went to the store that's in my mall here. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be really vague. And uh, the guy, I was like, I was like, are you guys getting the alt cover in the player's handbook and all that? And he was like, yes, we are. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I was like, can I pre-order? He's like, no, we're not doing pre-orders. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, when are you getting it? And he, he said the 17th. I was like, okay, yep, okay. He was like, yeah, uh, we're getting it early. So we're getting it the 17th. And I was standing there for a second. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's the standard release date, not the early release date. And I was like, but I could, you know, maybe I'm remembering wrong. And I saw uh, on the whiteboard behind him, it, they had written in D&D release September 17th. I was like, OK, OK, maybe I'm just misremembering. No. No, the 17th is the the regular release date for everybody. So I show up there yesterday and they're like, yeah, we don't have any player's handbooks at all. And they were like, yeah, we got them on the third. And I was like, oh. So two weeks early. Well, your uh, other employee told me that you weren't going to get them on the third. He said you get them on the 17th. And she was just kind of like, oh, 
Yeah, no, we we got them on the third. Sorry about that. I was like, cool, cool. So I was lied to, and I should have I should have questioned my man's. I should have. I knew it in the in my heart of hearts. I knew I should have, but I was like, no, it's fine. I'll trust him. I should not have trusted him. Uh, and you're like, this man is capping right now, but I got nothing else to go on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I ended up. Uh, I ordered it from a comic store in Michigan. So oh. hopefully it gets here legitimately. And uh, that's where we're at right now with that. Nice. Yep. Because I was looking online. And I was like, well, maybe. And there were some stores that were shipping them. And I found a random one in Michigan. And I was like, well, the website looks pretty legit. Their social media is up to date and stuff. Seems seems legit that it said they had 10 in stock. I was like, OK, that's a number that like sounds reasonable as opposed to like 400 or some shit, you know, so I was like. All right, here we go. So and I got a confirmation email, so now I'm just waiting. Nice. Yeah, so that's where we're at with the Fortunately, it's, you know, books time. Say so it's going to be a little late, but better late than never. I'm just happy I got the alternate cover because I would have been really annoyed if I had to get the normal cover and then the other two I got as alt covers. Like if I had only one be the normal, I would I I'd be like, no, I can't do this. I'd be like, that's looking fair. For, so I have the I'd be looking for it on eBay or some shit for two hundred dollars. <laughs> like I'd be like, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, I so I have the uh, the critical role like collaboration art books. They they did. Yeah, they did like three or four of them or whatever. And I only have the fourth one as like the variant, like limited edition one that came in the big tome that had like the map and all the the sketches in character and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had the other leather bounds because they were so nice. Listen, they're out there. I'm sure you could find them. It's just do you want to pay that price? I mean, so they were two hundred dollars on crit roll shop. Oh, boy. They're going to be way fucking more yeah no i double I'm good. i'll just i'll just take that l it's okay at, at least double for sure yeah 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 i'll just take the l it's okay at the end of the world it's not but it <sighs> spiritually it is you know yeah it's not the end of the world but it feels like it is yeah <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah it's a loss that i will never live down frankly in your heart of hearts in my heart of hearts exactly yeah just, just never gonna live it down Anyway, you can continue, though. We're not actually talking about D&D at all today. <laughs> no, no, we're going to continue the trend of Isaiah doing weird shit, talking about the games that he's playing because it's the only thing he gives a fuck about because it's got big robots in it. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about Lancer again. And um, this is going to be one of those things where uh, we've talked about this about a million and a half times. And we're going to talk about it probably about a million and a half more as long as we're recording, which is uh, read other books to find cool oh, mechanics oh. that you can use in your games, even if you're not running the same game. I thought and you were saying for a second of, that we, we talked about this specific mechanic multiple times. I was like, I don't, I don't think we have. Oh, no, no. I, I brought it up in our, like, you Lancer. You brought it up casually, yes. Introductory thing, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, huh. The, the thing that I wanted to talk about today are the sit rep systems in Lancer. And you might be like, dear listener, what the fuck is that? And don't worry. So sit reps are Lancer's answer to combat, essentially. Whenever you have combat well, in game. Lancer's answer to organizing combat, right? Uh, it's, so it's it's organizing combat, but it's also it's, it's combat. It's objective based Tactical play is, I believe, how they describe it in the book. Okay. Basically, uh, Lancer treats all combat as more than just two piles of hit points whacking away to each other and doing some simple math. Uh, The game tells you pretty blatantly that straight up death matches should be pretty rare when designing for the game, right? Like you can have just a straight up slug fest between you know, your pilots and enemy pilots, but it should not be the norm and it shouldn't even really be a regular occurrence. And I think that's really cool. The game's specifically telling you that you have to think outside of the box for these things because the game is mechanically built around outside of the box thinking is really cool. It sets up something and it gives you real concrete answers for it, unlike D&D. And that's great. That's fantastic. And 
the game literally gives you, uh, I think, six uh, sit reps. By the way, if you don't know what a sit rep is, it, it's shorthand for situational report. I, I, uh, I was waiting. It, I was waiting for you to actually describe it because I was like, I, I did not know until I read your notes. So, oh really? Okay. <laughs> yes. So I was, I was kind of hoping you'd describe it at some point. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Explain it uh, to the plebeians like myself. Yes, it's, it means stands for situational report. Uh, in actual combat, a situational report is basically just giving your superior officer the lowdown on what the fuck is going on right now. Like, you know, if someone says, give me a sit rep, it's like, okay, so, you know, we're we're pinned, we're under fire, shit's fucked. Uh, help. A little bit, just just toss us a crumb of air support, if you could. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's cool, because the actual section of the game gives you key terms for understanding the layout of, the, of each sit rep. It gives you detailed descriptions of said sit reps. Uh, I will go over them right now. They are control, escort, extraction, gauntlet, holdout and recon and that's just from the core rulebook there are a bunch of unique or remixed ones in the official and homebrew like lancer add-on content there's just a bunch uh in fact there's one called if you were so inclined lancer enhanced combat which has i think 15 sit reps in which is super cool and like it's like defend the giant robot like that are having a you know there's one where basically two giant robots having a fight. It's called Clash of Titans. It's really sick. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. Uh, Leave me I, alone. I, I understand. I know that it's a reference to like actual military stuff, uh, but I, I must say I, I don't love the name Sit Reps because I don't feel like it tells me what the mechanic actually is. You know, like... It feels yeah, like a I, it feels like a fun little reference, but I don't know that it actually informs me what it's for by the name. So the reason for that is is that on the face of it, you're right, it doesn't. But the game, the way the game talks about it, is that you're supposed to describe each sit rep to your players as if you are giving them a sit rep. Right, right. So Which, you you give them you'll you, know, you describe what the objective is. You describe the victory conditions how the victory condition works, how many enemy forces are going to be there, their reinforcement numbers, how to gain points to win. You have to give all of these things to your players as if you are actually their commanding officer giving them a sit rep. Aren't most... Aren't sit reps, though, in real life, post... Like, they're a a post-situational report. They're not before, right? Isn't before, like, a brief... So yes, at, at the beginning of an operation or mission, you get a briefing. A sit rep is a it's while you're afterward. in. No, that's your debriefing. Oh. oh. No, no. A sit rep is a if something in a mission in some sort of in in whatever scenario you're in, if something has changed, if the plan must be deviated from, that's the sit rep. So okay. the way that the game, I assume the game would would think that missions should work is. You give them their thing. You're like, okay, you have to get into this thing. You have to get into a building, steal the thing and get out. You're assuming that nothing is going to go wrong in the middle, but you tell the, you know, you tell the players or the pilots or whatever that be prepared for obstacles. Give me in in, when they come, I'll give you a sit rep. So the idea being they're like, oh, hey boss, we just got ambushed. What do we do? And he's like, okay, here's the sit rep. Or, you know, your boss could be asking you for one, in which case you're like, okay, this is what we're looking at. A little it's, bit it's, of a it weird... It is obtuse. Yeah. Yeah, it's obtuse. I'm not going to lie. But well, like, it, with it, context, it makes a lot of sense. It's not necessarily that it's it's uh, 100% obtuse. It just feels a little weird in a game context because you as the GM are acting as both the adversaries and the boss giving them information. So it comes across a little weird because obviously... It is a little wonky, I'll give you that. Because obviously in real life your commanding officer is not also the enemy commanding officer, but the tabletop said you <laughs> are that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like it, yeah, I get what they're going for, but yeah, I don't know something about the name. I want, I, I feel like I want a different name. Not that I have a better name in mind, but I don't know. I just, I had mm-hmm. that thought when I was reading. It's not, it doesn't really matter, yeah. but you know. Yeah, no, no, but I, I get what you're saying. The, the name is not, obvious you'd want something like it's not objectives or uh you know like, you might call them missions mission if, you know, parameters if you're, if you're, 
Yeah, yeah. If like the actual mission you would call like an operation, you'd have like missions which are like, you know, sub things that you have to do, like yeah, sub goals. Yeah. Or shit, just call them sub goals. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, again, not really that important, but a thought I had. Yeah, yeah, no, I get you. Uh, so something interesting that the game talks about is it does give you a reference for about how many encounters uh, sit reps, quote unquote, that you're supposed to have in a given day. And based uh -huh. on all the wording and what I've been able to look up, missions should not last for more than a day. You know, it, it, they're, it seems like they're treating it like Armored Core rules where the missions are controlled, sort of tight knit things. But now in a tabletop sense is a day in Lancer. Are, are they treating it relatively to a day in D&D, &D, like between every long rest type of situation? Or yes. Yes. OK. So a day being we wake up, we do the mission, we go to bed. That's a day. A mission should not go past a, a singular long rest. Yes, that that's what it seems like. The, the thing that's interesting to me, and this is a bit of a tangent, is I've read some of the modules uh -huh. and the missions in those are long as fuck, dude. They're like five, six, seven, eight sessions long is what it seems like. It's it's yeah. pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of shit. And it's that's one of those weird things. I think that's one of those. Uh, I was about to say it's Ludo narrative disco biscuits, but it's not actually it's that's one of those things there where there's a little bit of a disconnect between designers and players, I think, because designers and D&D &D has this problem. Shadow of the Demon Lord has this problem. Shadowrun has this problem up the ass like nobody's fucking business. Pathfinder, like the designers know the game intimately well. So they, when they play it, they can play at a speed that many people, many normal players can't play at or don't play at or choose not to play at, depending. Um, so what they think you could do in a single, a singular session is often grossly overassumed versus how much players actually get done in a singular session. Kind of like how D and D is like, you should have six encounters a day. I, I, Six encounters a day for players who don't know the game intimately well. It's not happening. You'd be having like six to eight hour sessions if you tried to get all that in because combat takes so long with players who don't necessarily know what they're doing or just don't play that way. They don't play, you know, aggressively enough or whatever, you know, so it, that, I've noticed that problem in a lot of games. I a lot of people point out like Shadow of the Demon Lord is like every session should be one mission or one adventure and every adventure should be a level up. And if you go online, a bunch of people are like, I have never once completed an adventure in a single session in this game. I don't know what crack the designer is smoking. And I'm like, yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Lancer, the, the designers are like, it should take about this long. And then you look at what they prep and it's like, okay, maybe if I may, absolute Chad champion giga genius of a player. Sure. Yeah. You know. So like the final, the second to last mission in the no room for a wallflower act one module. Well, so the, yeah, so there's, there's mission you're in mission four. So you have mission four, a mission four B and mission four C. And then you have a downtime. Yep. And the whole thing is, let's see from, Mission four is damn near 150 pages, uh, damn near 50 pages long. And so each scene is broken up into beats, right. like narrative beats. Yep. I, I don't like that they call them that. I would prefer they just called them the scenes. Well, is it? Yeah. Okay. Like, like if you called it scene one, beat A, right, I think right. that makes more sense. Because you're like, oh, they're, they're narrative beats within a scene. But to call them a beat, it using... To my, you're using language describing minutia when you're talking about a macro. Like, don't do that. <laughs> it's a little uh, weird. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, 50 pages definitely comes across as a lot. Now, granted, I'm not looking at it right now. So, like, how much of that is, like, rules stuff versus or stat blocks or art or whatever, you know. But I see what you mean. 
the distribution of information can vary widely, obviously. But yeah, 50 pages comes across like a lot for sure. Yeah. Uh, but it says yeah. right here, let me try to find this section on it. Challenges and scope, uh, number of fights. Uh huh. So it says, assuming reasonably challenging opponents, players should be able to complete one to two combats between rests, short rests, or three to four combats between each full repair, which is a full long rest. Oh. I... Okay. So you should have three or four combats in a mission. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was I'm not... trying to run with that right now. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And it's a lot. Uh-huh. Now, granted, my first mission, the players role-played their way past literally all of it. Like, I think they made a grand total of like 13 to 15 rolls, and about eight of them were critical successes. So they just got to walk through the whole mission and did nothing to fight. Which, fair enough, you know, if that's what the dice say, that's what the dice say. But I'm, I'm trying it now. They've done their first combat, but it was a... I just didn't want to plan, plan for three like mech fights it's just so much prep so the first yeah. one i did was like a, a pilot based combat which is more free form so are okay are, are pilot combats assumed to be part of that calculation or is that saying mech combat's all it In doesn't specify okay oh, wait, no was... no it's special it's so the the over the actual section is called mech combat number of fights uh, okay, so it is, yeah, I was going to say, I was assuming it meant three to four mech combats because combats in Lancer, it sort of assumes mech combat because that's the, like, mechanical meaty bit of the game, right? Um, that's weird. So, okay, that's... That comes across, across as a little strange to me because I was under the impression that Lancer was a game where you would have less combats, but the individual combats would be longer and more impactful than something like a D&D &D easier or a medium, medium encounter, right? Like, I thought in, in that game it was more of a case of we don't fight that often, but when the fighting happens, it's a big fucking deal because I, f I feel like that's how the early pages of the book talked about mech combat. It's like, only bust out this when it matters, basically. And then yeah. with the sit rep thing, where it's saying all of your fights shouldn't just be slugfest, that also makes me think you're going to have combat less often because having a bunch of fights that aren't slugfest, like having a lot of fights, like if you have four fights in a day, now granted that doesn't necessarily mean a session necessarily but a, a mechanical day and all of them are fights that are not just slugfest like each of them has their own unique special objectives that feel that sounds a little mentally exhausting to be like okay first we have to do the infiltration fight and now we have to do the control fight now we have to do the holdout fight like and like each of them has their own unique objectives in their own plates to spin and shit like that sounds a little exhausting <laughs> To do every mission also i mean it yes it can be a little stressful i'm not gonna lie um i mean as a player right. i'm not even necessarily saying on the gm side i gm side it's oh, own i mean it's own crock of shit like i'm thinking as a player right if i'm a if i'm a player and let's say i'm like sort of averagely skilled as a player in that i know you know i know tabletop decently well i've read lancer i'm, I'm a pretty thorough reader uh, but I haven't played the game a whole bunch. And you're telling me this mission, we're going to have four combats and every one of these combat is going to have a different objective. And those different objectives are not going to just be punch the enemy until they die. That means every combat I have to now think a lot more about what I'm doing and what my loadout is and what's my teammates loadout and how are we going to complete this objective, which is fine. That's those are those are fun. But if you're doing that, Let's say you do it in a single session. Like, let's say you do three of those combats in the span of four or five hours. Holy crap, my brain is going to be cooked. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm slow roasting my, my wigglies over here. <laughs> you know, like, 
my wigglies, my wrinkles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so I mean, I my my players are not super mechanically inclined, and I'm uh -huh. very aware of that. Uh -huh. So I have done my best to make the sit reps <laughs> as simple as possible. You know, like uh, in the first combat that they didn't get to do, I was really proud of it, and I was really sad they didn't do it. But you know, that be the dice. <laughs> was they had to get like a giant uh, like storage case, right? It's like a mech size storage case. So they would have to, if they had tripped the security before they got into the fight, it would set up three like energy walls that they would either have to shoot through, shoot the generators to, which would be harder to hit because they're smaller, but they have less health. So you just kind of play the game on that one. Or you could hack them if you didn't do a lot of damage because the game is about hack. There's a lot of hacking that goes on. And Lancer. Yeah, hacking is sort of the magic system. Yeah. So they would have to fight through enemies while trying to destroy the walls, get the thing. One person would basically no longer be able to fight because they have to use their whole shit to carry the thing, but they can still like boost, for example, so they can get in, get out, get the fuck going um, while the other players cover them. And that sounds uh -huh. really complicated, but at the end of the day, it's just you walk to the end of the map. One right. person picks up the thing. They can't fight. And then you guys walk back. That's not you're right in, in that it's not super complicated, but imagine I had you had to do something like that three times in the span of four hours. By the third oh, well, one, that's you're, you. well, you're going to be a little go like by the third one, you're going to be kind of like mentally tired. You know what I mean? You are. Here's the funny thing. Uh -huh. So there's another section below number of fights called mech, mech combat length, and it states uh -huh. that. Uh, combat will often take a full session. Uh, or most of a session. Oh. Yes. Okay, so... So then... We're basically explicitly saying that a singular mission is going to take three to four sessions. Yes, they state that a mission can take one to four on average. Longer ones can take more. It's that thing where it's like... Okay. This is what it should be, but if it doesn't, don't like freak out. Right, right, like, right. Longer right. missions exist. Well, no, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I'm not worried about that. So, okay, so the game is being a. Okay, so the game is not saying have three, uh, three objectively complex fights in a singular session. It's saying have one fight a session, but have that one fight be really worth it. And like, yes. Okay. So then it okay. So in that case, yes, the game is doing what I what I was initially thinking, where it's saying have fights less often, but make those moment make those fights more impactful in terms of what they do and what what happens. So okay, so it is actually doing that. I was just sort of misunderstanding. Okay, I see. Okay, that's good. That's more. That feels a little more. Uh, honest than D, D. I don't know maybe honest isn't the right word realistic that feels more realistic that's a better way to put that than D. &D I mean does. no I, I mean I think I think Lancer is just a more honest game it's like here we have this idea for how you're supposed to run combat and then you go game how am I supposed to do that and then he goes don't you worry buddy boy we set it up for you you're like oh cool yeah yeah okay. next game whereas D, D is like we want you to run five to six combats per long rest and you're like game how the fuck am I supposed to do that it's like figure it out yeah, it's more realistic in its expectations, which is to say that it it's sort of it's it's helping you out. It's explaining it a little more. Yeah. OK, so. One fight a session, but that fight is going to be a big deal. Or Yeah, OK. Uh, I lost where we were at bullet point wise, but yes. I mean, we deviated real hard, so it's fine. Yeah, well, I was just trying to understand the pacing of things because I. I I was a little confused. I was like, my initial understanding of the game was like, yes, don't, you know, we don't, uh, we don't expect you to have a bazillion fights in this game because that would be kind of crazy. And then you were explaining the sit rep thing and how the missions are. And I was like, wait, so they do expect you to have a bunch of fights. It's like, no, they expect missions to last a longer period of time. This is just really all it comes down to. Um, yes. So, but you were saying the adventurers expect a mission to be done in a session, though? 
No, no. It, or is it, that it seems like the adventures expect missions to be done in like eight to ten sessions because they are very long. Oh, you're saying they're. But I thought, didn't you say something about the game telling you to make them shorter, but the adventures make them seem longer or something? Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So like, that's that's kind of what I meant, right? It's like the, the game tells you that, a, a you know, a mission should be one to four sessions. But for the life of me, I can't imagine oh, how you, oh, okay. this part of No Room for a Wallflower can be done. Uh-huh. It's it's literally 50 pages. How are you going to uh-huh. do that in four sessions? Like, I, 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 uh, right. What the fuck? And especially, let's see, you have... Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to read the sub contents of section three late summer. You have beat uh, 16A1, mission 4A, beat 16A3, combat 1, combat 2, combat 3, beat 16A4, combat 1, beat 16A5, combat 1, beat 16A6 and 16A7. Then you get to route B, which is... Uh, oh, okay. No, they're two different routes. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, 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 okay. okay. That's still a lot, though. It's that, like, like, let's that, assume that the beats are 20, 30 minute intervals. Uh huh. You still got six, uh, five combats in one mission. So that's five sessions by themselves, not yeah, counting yeah. all the role play and personal character stuff. You're looking at maybe 10 sessions. Right, right. That's a lot. Um,. I, I will say the way you were reading it out it was like beat a 16 C sounds like a fucking legal document where it's like section a subsection B two. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, look I, here. I'll, I'll show you a screenshot of the way they organize it. It's it's wacky. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So there's not as much disconnect from player to 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 designers as I thought, but there is still a little bit. It sounds like. Oh, Jesus. Okay, yeah, no, that's... or I. Yeah, okay. I'm not even 100%. I don't even know that I know how to read that, really. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's Isaiah a sent, it me is. A, a, sent me a, a picture of the routes within this uh, adventure... And yeah, it, it literally looks like legal document headers. That's just that's what it looks like. I, I think that's the point they're supposed to. They want it to look like an official like operation. Um, yeah, readout. yeah, like, kind yeah. Of, like a brief. Right. But uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Whew. OK. Yeah, so that, that covers that point. It just seems like the missions in, in the, the modules are just they're just long boys. They just long as a motherfucker. I, I find it interesting that the game is explicitly saying missions should take three to four sessions because I feel like that is quite the opposite of what a lot of more uh, a lot of modern tabletop games have been doing, where everybody is trying to have a singular session be a singular mission or a singular objective completed because uh, they want there to be that sense of like satisfaction to a session where it's like we've completed a thing, you know? That seems to be the trend of the hobby right now, so I think it's interesting that Lancer's like, nah, fuck that. It's an interesting... Yeah, I mean, so the interesting thing that I I feel like they're trying to capture is the way that... uh, or similar to to the way that Armored Core does things, where, you know, one mission in Armored Core is five to 20 minutes, and it's a video game, right? So it's not, not, not long at all. But three or four missions, quote unquote, are like a small arc. So it's like, oh, the fighting in, in Armor Core 6, right? It's like right. Uh, fighting Balaam for the planetary dominance. And you fight the Vespers for planetary dominance. And each of those are like their own things. And then it's the arc with the Ice Worm. And then there's like a couple missions that lead into the big fight with the Ice Worm. And then there's the thing with the Coral units. And then there's three or four missions that lead into that. It seems like that's what they're kind of working with or working towards. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Which is interesting because it's it seems like they're taking from you know directly from Mecha as a genre. Right. Right. To they're ki- they're kind of force the way that the narrative should feel. Yeah, they're kind of doing the thing where in the Mecha anime, it's like the individual fight that the main character participated in in this episode 
you know, didn't necessarily resolve the entire situation, but the fight resolved. So the satisfaction comes from that little self-contained, like we did this small objective. And yeah, so if you think about it in that in that way, where completing a sit rep is sort of completing a mini objective, it's a countdown clock, right? Your mission is is a four step clock. Each sit rep is a piece of the clock. Yeah, I got they're going for. I just think it's yeah. kind. Of, I just think it's interesting that yeah, they're sort of ignoring. They're kind of not ignoring. I, maybe I shouldn't say, but it seems like they're sort of intentionally turning away from where the tabletop hobby is currently moving towards. Which it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just an observation, you know. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Um, trying to think, brain, brain work. I, I guess. What was I trying to say? I guess something that would be worth noting is that Lancer is perhaps not a good. Uh, if you're fresh to the tabletop hobby, Lancer maybe not a good first game. <laughs> no, no, it's. It's a little deep for that. There's a lot well, that goes into combat. There's a lot that goes into running the game. There's a lot that goes into the general flow of even things like downtime. It's definitely yeah. not beginner friendly, but I think it, if you know what you're doing or if you're willing to get into the weeds, it's incredibly satisfying. Well, I wasn't even necessarily talking about the mechanical crunch, as it were, about being not beginner friendly. I'm just saying the flow of the like I think one of the reasons that a lot of games these days have been trying to push towards completing a sing- an adventure within a singular session is because as a new player you know tabletop is a very unique hobby in a lot of ways where if you're coming from board games for example you play a session of the board game you finish it and then you're done for the day, right? You completed a thing. There's a finality to it. Unless you're playing games like Monopoly, for example, in which case it just never ends. Uh, But a lot of board games are like, you play it within, you know, a couple hours and then you're done for the day. Tabletop is kind of weird in that a lot of the time that is not the case. So I think in order to make it a little more inviting to new players, they're trying to make it so you can complete an adventure in a day. A lot of games are. Whereas Lancer looked at that and said, Nah, fuck that noise. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hilariously, I actually had my last session. There was no combat. There was li- literally nothing happened last session other than the characters licking their wounds uh-huh. after having their asses kicked in pilot in pilot. What the fuck? Pilot combat. Uh-huh. They 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 got the workaround from another like elite team of lancers, and the the entire session was them being like, "Holy shit, we got our asses kicked." <laughs> Does, does and that wasn't from me doing that. That was just them like choosing. We're just gonna chill for a sec. Yeah, yeah. Does the game give any advice on no like zero combat sessions, zero tension sessions? Not that I remember. No. Yeah. Okay. I had I had a feeling that might be because I will say if there's one thing I was just thinking about how Blades in the Dark has kind of a similar a very similar structure to Lancer. And how Blades in the Dark suffers from a similar problem where the game doesn't really help you out if you're having a session where you don't do a score. It basically tells you you have to do a score every session or you're playing wrong, which is interesting. So I just it's it's funny. Yeah, Yeah, it it can be. Yeah, I don't know if it's even frustrating. It's it's a choice, right? It's a it's a choice from the designer. But if you don't necessarily want to play that way, it can be frustrating if you're trying to like squeeze out something in between so i was just curious if lancer had a similar problem and it sounds like the answer is maybe yes <laughs> no the answer is definitely yes uh yeah. because it has this problem but it also expects characters to not be going on like money making missions you know base lancer doesn't use money i'm using the variant rules from long rim where you do use money because uh uh-huh. like this is a weird thing i have with the game right the game says that there is no currency to be used, right? You just sort of abstract all of that. Uh-huh. But in lore, the no money thing is only in Union, which are like the good guys, right? They're they're it's in a specific the, area the Imperium of, of Man. Yeah, yeah. But they're not the majority. Most of the map, and there are like maps people have made, are open space where people are using 
real money. So the fact that the money system came in like two or three years later and it's really bare bones and it seems kind of like a, all right, fine, we'll do it. It's like, my guy, like, I get it. I get what you're doing. I get why you're doing it, but a little more would have been nice. And uh, it's definitely something I'm contending with. I don't regret putting the money in. I think it, it is it has put a real literal emphasis on players to do things that are money oriented because they are mercenaries, you know? Right. Like, for God's sakes, the entire last mission after they almost lost a fight, there was like a 15 minute in character discussion of do we just bail and take the hazard pay? We can do that. We can just leave. Like, I don't want to die. I, no, you don't want to die. None of us want to die. Like, this this politician we're guarding is cool, but, like, fuck him at the end of the day. <laughs> and that's cool. That's great that they had that. That's that's way more interesting than I think a lot of D&D campaigns where it's like, well, we're the good guys. We have to. We're the heroes, guys. You know, I know things are tough and we're in this shitty dungeon and the kobold just got fucking flattened by a stone, like, Caesar style from JoJo's. But we got to fight, guys. We got to keep doing this. And at least the long rim rules, they're like, nah, bro, just get the fuck out. Just leave. Like, you can leave. I, it's like, you're going to lose the mission and the narrative will shift because you've failed your mission, but you can do that. I just want you to understand how strongly I had to resist the urge to shout Caesar when you said that. <laughs> I, I had to try. I, I had to fight that. Back. I was going to see if I, it was going to happen. I had to fight the urge to just to just completely blow out my mic so hard there because I really wanted to. <laughs> but I was like, no, we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Just you just you had that the knee jerk reaction I get sometimes where your every fiber of your body's like say it say it say yeah, it say it like, yeah no yeah. yeah I I even heard, I heard the music and everything I saw Joseph cry I, I saw it all it was all in my head <laughs> oh my god <laughs> hell yeah dude let's oh. go <laughs> too funny. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, you just, God damn it. That's <laughs> fuck. What were you, what were you even on about? Yeah. So you're, you're saying, you know, um, it's a little weird that it feels a little weird that the players could just like, just say fuck it and leave. Cause they're, they have sort of a limited stake in the situation. No, it's not that it's weird. It's great because it, it, it forces them to not think like heroes. Right. Oh, when you, oh, when you have oh, I see players you that okay. come mostly from D and D, I thought you were saying it was a bad D &D, thing. No, it's great. I love okay. it. But it, like in D and D, there's like a moral compulsion yeah, yeah, to do yeah. the right thing. Even when I was playing Paz, a lawful evil character, there is a compulsion to I, well, we have to save Elturel. That's what the fucking adventure's about. Like you got to save Elturel. You know, it's it's weird to have a character in a situation like that. It's like, no, I just want to make everything worse. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But the players in Lancer using the mana system can just be like, fuck it. And you might be curious, well, how does the main game do it? The main game just assumes that because money is abstracted, you just get the resources to do a bunch of shit. But I, yeah, it doesn't like, really care. I wanted to treat the level ups more like advancements in, uh, Power by the apocalypse games where you get pieces of your level up based on how much money you make. And you, the players will be stronger for being the most like warmongering mercenary parts of themselves, right? Like this, this mission specifically says the more of the other mercenaries they kill, the more money they get. But then you ask the moral question of like, well, so wait, the game these guys is, are just trying to do it. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm? So the game is saying that fictionally, fictionally, yes, the characters are getting paid. Mechanically, though, you as a GM just don't worry about it. You just don't worry right. about it. You just go, yep, you just get all the resources you need to do this thing. You just get it. It's like, well, eh. I don't inherently it doesn't hate feel. That. No, I don't hate it, but it, it. As long as there's some other form of like kind of reward payback system in. The you well, yeah, you get the reserves, which are they're neat one use abilities and items that you get. That allow you to take them into the next mission. Uh -huh. So, for example, uh, one of the reserves you can get is like, oh, we have to back up this 
uh, the, like the albatross, the like the the holy knights in space that defend the space truckers. It's like, uh -huh. oh, we have to defend them because they're getting attacked by pirates, and then in return, they're gonna give us the the sniper squad, sniper uh -huh. team reserve. So the next mission, we can drop a sniper team somewhere and have them give us cover while we rush an objective. Is or if there, you want to um, help IPSN in general, you can like ODST, like orbital, like you can hell diver drop into a mission if you want. <laughs> is there a, uh, is there like a, um, who's a, what you call it? Uh, like, uh, brain do a thinky is there like a sort of equivalent to like a DD &D magic item type of thing like some other kinds of like tangential reward for the players directly yes it's called exotic gear so the difference okay. between reserves and gear is that gear is permanent as long as it isn't destroyed so for example uh um moon's character she has a chain axe that she got from a blackbeard you know they have like the big cool sword and the chain axe uh -huh. she can keep that chain axe forever but if it gets destroyed she'll have to buy a new one or spend money on a level one license for blackbeard so she has infinite chain axes she can just keep getting them if they're destroyed but that's really expensive you know what i mean okay because it's not just the item it's like you know you're you get another one of those you just have a whole new mech that you can get and that's a level one that's a level up requirement that's there's a big character pay or, or price yeah investment that you have to that you have to pay into uh -huh. okay uh it, that being said exotic gear can include mechs you can just get a mech like uh okay so there are no other... room for a wallflower yeah you can get an enkidu my favorite like the you know berserker boys you can just get one of those if you beat it in combat and then you can deploy in it, but you can only deploy in it if you have, you know, first you can only do it as long as you have that thing. If, if that mech's gone, it's gone. There's nothing you can do anymore, unless you take the license levels to keep it permanent. There are other, other, um, other reward system things in there. If you don't like without dealing with the money system. Yes. Okay. That's, that's the only thing I was really curious about is like what other kind of replacements are there for a reward system of some kind yeah so the game says you know for any given mission you your main thing that the main thing that the players are going to be going for each time is to progress their character to get their level ups their yeah. you know get their next license level their next mech skill uh talent point trigger option all that stuff and then you sweeten the deal with reserves and then you sweeten it farther with exotic gear the way that I'm doing it is I'm giving them an actual literal money buy-in for doing the missions, paying them more for doing extra stuff, and then giving them reserves and exotic gear. Mm -hmm. This is a twofold thing that I'm doing on purpose because some missions are not going to give them as much money as others, right? So if they, like, let's say, or every mission has the capability of giving them a full level up payout. That's the way that I'm writing it right now if they do everything, but there's okay. a cost to doing everything. So like I said, the current mission, they'll get paid out the full amount if they kill all of the other mercenaries. But there is a there's a literal thing going on where the other mercenaries whole thing is because they get that this is a job. They don't want to kill people unnecessarily. They'll disable your mech and they'll they'll give you what they call professional courtesy to be like, hey, I know this is a job, man. I'm not trying to hurt you. You seem like a good guy. I'm we're just going to step off. We put you out of the fight. You can go home now and go back to your family. Now, the players can honor that respect that they're getting, or they can dishonor it and get paid more. But if they honor it, there's potential for more reward later on. So because those guys can come back and be like, ah, you know what? You spared us that one time. You guys are pretty good. We're going to let this rock. But if they I kill see. them all, it's like, nope, fuck you. You're done. <laughs> Look, I know I'm going on tangents here, but this is such a cool, like, I love this. Game. I was going to say, it occurs to me we haven't actually described the sit reps themselves. Should we do like a full for each sit rep? We can do that. I don't know. That's up to you. I believe you mentioned yeah, it in it. your notes, so. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, as I said before, the sit reps you get 
in the base game are Control, Escort, Extraction, Gauntlet, Holdout, and Recon. Control, it's a pretty basic idea. You know, it's just capture the objective, a la domination from, from Call of Duty. You have to stand in a certain control point and make sure that no other enemies are around to contest it. If you can keep enemies out for a full round, you get one uh, victory point. You need a total of, I believe, uh, or you just need more than the enemy, uh, and you have a time limit of five rounds. So if there's four objective points, you can get up to four points per mission after five point uh, five rounds. If you have two and the enemy only has one, then you've won the combat. So they give you the enemy has more, actual, they, can beat they give you like actual mechanics to implement too. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was just descriptors. I didn't think they also gave you like uh, bespoke mechanics. Yes, that's some, makes them so cool. Uh, up next, okay. you have escort, which is more than just uh, like bring someone to a thing. It is you can escort either a live target or a physical objective. The idea being is that you either have to take that person from one spot to another, or you have to go and get them and then bring them out of something. And it, uh, another thing I haven't described yet is that it actually gives you um, like diagrams and it tells you that where the enemies are going to be coming from, where your players are going to be deploying from and what the objective spots look like. So for control, if it's a um, landscape sized rectangle, enemies will deploy from the top. That is the ingress zone where the enemies will come from. Underneath it at the bottom is the player deployment zone where they will be coming from and cut into four quadrants. You have objective A, B, C, D. For escort, you have another landscape style map. Players will uh, deploy from the left side and the extraction is on the right side. Again, assuming that that's the kind of uh, escort that you're doing again you could be a you have to start in the same place that you're leaving from go get the thing and bring it back and there are ingress zones uh that essentially box the players in they're they're running through a tunnel to fight uh the escorts are cool because it states that unless specified otherwise the enemies will not try to destroy the objective if it's like a thing like a like a you know let's say it's like a key or some sort of like uh, like safe or whatever they're going to try to take it back from you. There is no victor if the objective is destroyed in this instance. To say like, oh, well, you know, both sides want it. If it gets blown up in a straight explosion, then we're all fine. Which one was this again? After extraction? that? Uh, escort. I mean, escort. It's annoying because it's got extraction zone on the map, but it's not, right. it's not. an extraction mission. Got it. Got it. Or, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. Escort is bring well, bring them from one place to the other. It's an escort quest. Extraction is where you have to go get the thing and then bring it back. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I yeah, they. I don't like that they're both E. They're a little like, similar. They start with an E and they're yeah. similar. Yeah. There is a difference. After that, you. Are, yeah. yeah. After that, you have Gauntlet, which is cool because Gauntlet is like escort and extraction you start from one side of the map and you have to bring yourself to the other but the point is to get to the objective zone and you can't get there as fast as possible there's also another time limit on this one you have to clear out just enough of the opposing force which is described as the op four uh, yep, you have yep, to destroy yep. just enough of them to where you can get to the objective zone and survive so if you just haul ass you're going to get mowed down because there's too many of them to do that. After that, you have holdout. <laughs> Can I pretty self-explanatory. The, the phrase op what? four just makes me think of Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> oh, is that what they call it in Rainbow Six? I'm pretty sure op four is a real phrase. Like an oh, actual... no, it is. Yeah, it just it just literally means opposing force. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, they use it in Siege all the time. Hmm. They'll say like, you know, whenever someone dies, it'll be like op four, four remaining. Oh, that's oh, op, neat. I know. Op four, two, two opponents remaining. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. After that, we have holdout. Pretty self-explanatory. We've all done this in D and D at least one point, where you, there's no end to the bad guys. You just have to make it a certain amount of rounds or a certain number of minutes, whatever it is. Just survive. <laughs> New objective. Survive. survive. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yep. Uh, after that, the one that is kind of complicated is recon. Is it took me a while to figure out how it works. Recon works kind of like control, 
except you start at the bottom and you have to set up the points yourselves. Okay. If I'm reading this correctly. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're basically like, it's like setting up, um, you're like setting up satellite towers to scan an area or, you, you know, you're doing those kind of missions. It's not just you have to sit there and have the thing. One player has to physically interact with the recon objective to get it to work. That's cool. Those are the those are the six. Again, in the enhanced combat, you get about 15 that have some really cool ones like. Uh, you have Behemoth Brawl, where there's like a giant slow moving mech heading towards you and you have to slowly disable it before it gets to the, the steps of faith or steps of fate in 14. Oh, oh, big. Am I thinking of the right one. I the steps you, of faith you is, fight is Nidhogg on the bridge. No, that's not Nidhogg. It's a big dragon, but it's not Nidhogg. But yes. Okay, yeah, but you, you fight, fight the big him on the bridge that. that is walking very slowly to the end of the bridge. Yeah. Yes. Fun fact, that's uh, not a trial anymore. Oh, did they take it out? That's so funny. They didn't that take it sucked. out. It was so bad. They didn't take it out, but it's a solo instance instead of a trial. That's not so bad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other one I was talking about is you have Clash of Titans, where you have just two enormous mechs, uh -huh. and you have to fight the enemies to stop them from disabling your mech, you're, while you're also doing what you can to disable the enemy mech while they uh -huh. fight it out in a in a double in a super duper giant robot fight above right, your right, heads. Right, it's right. really cool. <laughs> there's big robot fight, and then there's really big robot fight. Yeah, yeah, oh, that fuck, one's probably my zone. current favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fun fact. Uh, my players don't know what any of these words mean, but I'm going to throw the armored fortress from armored core four at them. The spirit of mother will. I was going to say, gonna I, 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 I know what you're talking about immediately. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit of mother will the yes, fucking, yes. The giant gun thing with legs. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. going to be a good time. I've got that one saved. I'm, I'm very excited for it. And then, you know, the game, it doesn't have a, a sit rep for it, but, you know, just basic. It's in the it's called in the ComCon. I believe it's just called standard combat. Let me check really quick. Counter toolkit. By the way, if you're going to run Lancer, the people who made it have a companion uh, browser site or like program that you can run on your computer called the ComCon. It stands for uh computational concierge. That's just what they call any computer or base level AI in Lancer. And it allows you to build character sheets, customize mechs, create NPCs to throw at the players, build encounters, organize entire missions. It's got full compendiums of all of the mechs, the licenses, the rules, the gear, bonds, talents for your characters, the NPC classes, all the reserves. It's got a full action economy um, page that describes how each action in con like uh, how a turn in combat will go. So it's, it describes either one full action or two quick actions, one move, one overcharge, if applicable, one reaction and one free action. And that's basically how like you don't have to do them in any particular order, but it's just the things you can do before your turn ends. And then underneath it lists whole uh, lists of actions and whether they're full action or uh, quick action whether or not they're a tech action, which is like hacking stuff. Um, Self-destruct is here, which is really funny because um, it's not labeled as anything as far as I'm aware. It's just a thing you can do, but you need the specific ability. Like you need the gear. You, you need the self-destruct device installed in your mech to actually do it. It's very funny. Right, right. Of course. You can't just say fuck it. You just got to be, you have to, you have to build that shit and be like, this is going to come in handy. Watch. <laughs> it even gives you a list of downtime actions. And some of them I don't feel like are downtime actions. Like there's one called gunfight where you just have like a one-on-one -on -one, like Mexican standoff. Uh, I feel that's like that's a, a cool thing to do. It, yeah, and it gives you rules for it too. So uh, let's see. First, the players decide on who shoots first, then roll a skill check. I believe the figure out who shoots first is based on just like a like you roll it, you know, just two d20s. Whoever gets the highest. Right. Uh, Triggers like take someone out or show off apply here so you can add, you know, your triggers to them on a nine or lower. You miss your shot and you get to choose whether or not you get shot uh, and then you take harm. Uh, you duck and weave out of the way and an NPC or bystander gets shot or an item is destroyed on a 
10 to 19, your shot hits, you deal harm is established. On a 20 plus, your shot instantly kills your opponent, intentionally or not. If you shot first, uh, you shoot them before they even get the chance to draw. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that. Mm -hmm. I, I this mean, was supposed to be a, a, a sit reps episode. This is just becoming a sit reps plus expanded Lancer episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, in terms of the downtime, is it doesn't Lancer like tell you to play out downtime though? Aren't you expected to actually play it? Yes. So, well, kind of. Lancer is described in two sections. You have uptime and downtime. Uptime is any time that you are physically deploying in a mission. Downtime is everything else. So it's not only is it the downtime actions you take to progress your character, it's whatever personal stories you've gone done, any personal stories you go on, which can include like missions. They're just not mercenary missions. They're, oh, you know, my girlfriend got kidnapped. We have to go save my girlfriend. Like that, uh -huh. that can be described uh -huh. as a mission. There can be sit reps within that mission, but it's still technically downtime. Okay. Yeah. There is actually, there's a cool little thing that's optional rules for debriefing where it's where you, the characters actually do their level up stuff but it allows players and characters to discuss what went right, what went wrong, um, things that they can learn or, or try to remember for next time. That's really cool. It's like, you don't see that in D&D. &D. It's not like, oh, so how do we think we did when we fought that red dragon? I, you know, I really think the bard could have used more inspirations. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. The cleric's heels were not as on point as they could be. It's, it's, a, it's, it's your debrief. Yeah, yeah. The, the evocation wizard... Uh, really kept getting got caught in the AOEs and the ev evocation wizard says you have to adjust for black mage and you, you just want to punch them from across the table because you're like fuck you this isn't 14 <laughs> stop getting hit with dragon fire <laughs> you don't have ley lines asshole uh huh it's fine I'm fine everything's fine don't worry about it I mean I just just feel like I, I'm not I'm not commenting because I'm trying to not make you tangent further. <laughs> Look, we're just we're just we're just padding the runtime, buddy. We're just padding the runtime. <laughs> I mean, sure, but you still have a lot more notes going on. Here. I do. We're only about halfway through the notes. This is wild. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, well, so before we, we jump to this, I, I will mention I myself have personally designed five sit reps. And I'm not going to lie, they are an adjustment, right? You know, I, I've come from running a lot of fifth edition or fifth edition adjacent. I'm used uh -huh. to just thinking about, you know, kill, you know, murder, wife, kill. Like that's that's where a lot of my brain goes. And if I want to do something special, I'll give them like an objective based combat. But those are typically, I think most GMs that run 5e will think of the same thing. Those are special occasions when you want to when you want to be a little spicy in the bedroom. Right. Those are a little more rare. But this game is basically telling you, no, you got to spice that. Yeah, only spice. Every every mission is spice. I no white no no white rice out here. Only spice. Yeah, I don't know. And, I I'm going I'm going back and forth in my head on whether I think that's a good idea or not. Like I understand what they're mean, right? Don't have a combat unless it's fucking worth it and it matters. Like I get it. Don't have trash mobs, don't have random encounters, you know, like get that shit out of here. But at the same time, I think there is a certain degree of like catharsis to just showing your giga chadness and dunking on some fucking goblins but then also but i suppose the thing in lancer 2 is like a lot of the combat stuff is designed so that you can build your character to not just be the damage cannon machine which who man yeah i really can't make a decision about this like i just went back and forth in my head four times as i was talking <laughs> like yeah well so remember there you can just dunk on bad guys it doesn't say that you can't do standard combat right. it's it just, just says it saying, shouldn't be often yeah don't do it all the time all right guys R random internet demons being I, internet demons again you really should have Brett deal with that that was that was a time uh yes I it's fine everything's fine <laughs> I don't know what happened but everything's fine 
I think. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> that was very concerning. I'm gonna be honest. Fingies crossed. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. As I was saying, it, it allows for, for things to not go players' way and it not be the actual end of the world. Wait. No. Hold That's on. That's really I, cool. Wait. No. 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 You gotta back up more than that. <laughs> gotta back up. Yo, more should more. I do the whole thing? I think so. Yeah. Because I got really. I lost. I. I was deeply lost. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So what I basically what I was saying is, yeah, th this it's a godsend. You know, it doesn't seem like it at first, because when you're first reading the rules, it can be kind of daunting to have to go like, oh, well, I have to prep like I have to really put in for every combat I run. Like, that seems like a lot. And it, and it is. It is a lot. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. But what I was saying was, is it allows each encounter to have real narrative weight behind it. You know, if a player fails, if players fail combat in 5e, it's because either they died or someone that they're like escorting died. And in the latter, that's cool because that has a, like a cool narrative reflection in the game. Like, oh, well, the princess is dead. What do we do now? Can we revive her? Can we not revive her? So on and so forth. But if the players just get murked, well, there's not a whole lot that you can do after that. You know what I mean? There's always this sort of unspoken thing that when you're playing 5e and you're fighting Zariel or whatever, if you die, you die. That's it, right? The game's over. Narrative ends. Yeah. But in Lancer, if you're doing a holdout mission, for example, and all of your mechs are destroyed, but your your pilots are alive. Right, right. Well, that's, you know, they can retreat and the story goes on. Now, the it could be their narrative will shift. Are the players near their evacuation point? Does it become a like horror game now that they have to run away from from it's like it becomes Attack on Titan for them? <laughs> Except <laughs> the Titans have machine guns and rocket launchers. <laughs> or uh can they try to proceed and like hijack enemy mechs, which could be cool as fuck. Either way, it it yeah. It allows for their narrative to shift dynamically with the, the encounters rather than be make or break beholden to them. And right. inversely, go on. Well, yeah, the, the, it's like the overall objective is to try and make. Well, a to try and give some of that military feel right, because in real life, a military objective is never just going to be kill every single target in an area, right? It's going to be kill a specific target, you know, cover this area, move through to protect this spot. Like it's all, it's never just going to be kill every single living thing in sight. So it's, it's to reinforce that military feel, but also to, to get rid of that, that five E D and D vibe of, of, or even that like JRPG vibe of like, we're just killing stuff for the sake of XP points and to kill stuff. Um, exactly. So, yeah, it's supposed to keep things more interesting. But yeah, I can see how. I can also see it's funny because if you do anything too much, it can get old, right? So, like, no matter how many interest, no matter how many interesting objectives you kind of conjure up there, at some point, players are going to be like, can I just hit the bad guy? You know? Yeah, so of course. It's it's funny like that. But yeah, you can you can still do that, though. So, like. Perhaps I'm overthinking it a, a bit. I mean, I, I think genuinely if you were running Lancer and you wanted one standard combat, a mission where you're having two or three combats. Right. It's not the end of the world. You know, sometimes you want slugfest. Sometimes you don't. It, I, I'm not going to tell you like, no. And the game tells you, it, it, you know, the game's not like you're absolutely beholden to this. And if you can't do it, the game doesn't work. The game's just like, hey, look. A lot of the mechanics for the mechs are built around you know, non-combat based objectives to, to get the most out of it. That's how you get the most out. Of it. Right. I also feel like. Oh, I, I shouldn't. I was talking and then looking at the notes at the same time and it just fucking cooked, <laughs> cooked the thought. Um, I also Excuse wonder. Me. Yeah, I also wonder how the game would work if you did, if you did a couple of missions where you only had one combat for the entire mission, but that one combat was quite dense in what's going on, you know? I could see like, that. So what would be really would cool work. is if you had one mission, like one combat, but the combat was multi-stage. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean by so dense. So like, 
Yeah, like let, let's say if you want to do the the behemoth brawl, right? You want to fight the spirit of Mother Will. If the mission is, you know, di uh, disable one of its legs, and then you climb up, and you know, and there's like you're fighting bad guys all the way. And once you're inside of it, that you go, you get to take a rest, so you can get to repair and heal a little bit. Right, right. And then the next stage is fight to the core, and then you get to the. That would be cool. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. But it, it, it's sort of technically only one combat. It's just stages of combat. Well, I'm also wondering if you could just have one mega combat with like quite a complicated objective that maybe lasts like two sessions or whatever, but it's the only combat for the entire mission. You, know? you could do that for sure. I does does the, the game only thing does the game tie any form of like progression or anything to how the mission goes down or it's just it's just whether you succeed or fail, right? So succeed or it doesn't in base Lancer. If you fail or succeed a mission, it doesn't matter. You still get paid out. Oh, you okay. still get yeah. to level up, but it doesn't care. Um, it doesn't care how many fights you do in a combat, right? I don't remember that. Being no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, it cares more in the variant rules because it goes into you have uh, major objectives, minor objectives and incidental objectives. So and that's an instance where if an in, if a minor objective is kill everyone <laughs> well you're gonna want to fight as much as you can to make more money right right uh and if you fail using the variant rules you get that's where you get hazard pay which basically says you get half for whatever your upfront pay would be and i uh -huh. as far as i'm aware in the way that i'm running it, it doesn't take uh it doesn't take side objectives in as standard so if you let's say you your main objective is 700 mana, but every side objective is 100. If you still completed three side objectives, you get 300 plus your hazard pay. It's not, well, you only get 350 and then fuck off, you know? I see. That's the way I'm doing it, because that, that just seems logical to me. Like, but we did all this stuff, GM. We don't get paid for any stuff we already did. And the GM looks at you and goes, no. Like, that That seems kind of weirdly counterintuitive. To right. Partial. Partial pay looking for out partial, for partial work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think, it, you know, to it to an earlier point, the cool thing about having these like objectives that go beyond just Punch. kill, right, is that it really benefits players who don't specifically build for number go bigger. Right. If a player right. like prefers more like role play centric play, they could thrive in a control sit rep or a recon sit rep where rather than having to kill things, they get to interact with the objective. They get to be the person on the computer hacking the satellite array to get into position to shoot the laser, you know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't... That is a problem that D&D &D suffers from, right? Where you can't really make a character that isn't gonna do number go bigger in some capacity because that's really the only way to win, quote-unquote. So, yeah, the idea of you could build a character who is, a, like... Like, I think a lot of people try to do in 5e that often get disappointed because it's sort of unsatisfying is the support type character. You can't really be a support character because there's not that many abilities to really do it. They don't cover that many bases in the game. So with this and the idea that you don't have to just kill everything to win, then you have it opens up the room for the designers to design all sorts of things that are not. Uh, that are not specifically good for combat, but they're still useful abilities. Because basically what happens in 5e, right? If you have an ability that's built for something other than combat, it's considered bad. It's a bad, useless ability. Yeah. Which is, yeah, not great. Kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, so a perfect example here with Lancer, right, is you have the Lancaster frame, the like weird horse mech with the trucker on it. Yeah. It literally only has one ability standard that's a straight up combat attack ability and it's it's called the cutter mark II plasma torch it does one damage it has a range of one space but it deals 10 armor piercing damage which means it ignores all defenses against objects cover terrain and environments so if your mission is you know uh like the building is collapsing the Lancaster goes, I can do it. And they just kind of walk over and start cutting a hole in the building. And that's right. all they have to do for the whole combat. Right? right. And they're completely viable to do that. You know, they also have the restock drones, which can like give other Lancers ammo. And so you can do that without attacking the winch cable is it's a winch cable. 
You're using giant <laughs> it's, giant vehicles. It's a witch game. Use your brain. <laughs> yeah. In the, like a million and one uses, really. Uh, then you get cool stuff like the mule harness, which lets other mechs ride you like a like a combat like, like yeah, a war horse. Okay. <laughs> There's a great uh, build with Lancaster I saw where, where it's a it's a Lancaster and Blackbeard mix, but the two mechs is one is a Lancer, or one is a Blackbeard with Lancaster, and the other one is Lancaster with Blackbeard, and the build is called. Alexander the Great and his horse and Bucephalus <laughs> and his rider. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. My, and the my, idea is they're just super aggro murder machines that like one rides the other into combat dual wielding chain axes. <laughs> now question, if you play the Lancaster mech, can you like stick a bunch of weapons on that bitch and turn it into a fighting mech if you wanted? Yes, you can. Um, uh, not a bunch of them, but you can stick weapons on it because it has okay. a main auxiliary mount which means you can have one main weapon and one auxiliary or two auxiliaries uh-huh, uh-huh. which basically just means you can put like a cannon like a gatling and like a little drone like a little fin funnel or like two fin funnels or two like attack drones uh, and it's got an integrated weapon mount which doesn't count towards any of your mount slots which is your latch drone which uh, I don't believe does any damage uh, yeah it can't make attacks. Instead, it chooses an allied mech within range and make a range attack with against evasion eight. But you could maybe. Oh, you can actually restore HP. That's there's, that's very rare. Most you like most mechs cannot regain a, like HP once damaged. You have very to repair rare. them. The only ones that I think can at the moment are the Lancaster because it's got that thing, and the Baylor, which is just nanites anyway. So it's just sort of repairing itself perpetually. Mm-hmm. Could you replace the the repair thingy with some other kind of weapon? No, because it's integrated. It's part of the robot. So if you, for example, so you can, you can, so the cool thing about Lancer is that all that licensed stuff, you can put any of that other stuff on any mech. So you can have a Blackbeard with mule harness and the sealant spray and all that. That's, that's all stuff you can do. But if you want to use the Lancer mech itself, it has its own built-in systems that you cannot repair. That's what makes them unique. I see. It's their class abilities. Yeah. Uh, I'm just shout out again to the the kid, the the variant frame of the Lancaster that doesn't have any heal abilities, but it has the Jolly Roger orbital satellite weapon. <laughs> oh, oh. That can do three things. It's got one ability called Plunder, which uh, scans every enemy within a certain radius and instantly locks onto them. Swindle, which is a uh, and like a system, like an AOE hack. And then the final one called Shiver Timbers, which fires a weapon that ignores all armor and cover. <laughs> Shiver Timbers. You just hit them with the Hammer of Dawn. <laughs> I see. I love this thing so much. Me timber. That's the one I was showing you with the lady who's standing on top of it. It's got the pirate hat and it's got the little robots. Yes. And one of them is looking out to the distance doing the man. Yes, I, I do know. <laughs> Please put the, that little robot in the thumbnail. Just to be like, damn, bro. What else? What else did I have? Oh, I mean, the last big thing is is a personal thing, right? Is like, does it have any issues? Is this system perfect? No, obviously not. We've talked about it before. There's a lot of work that will go into this. If you choose to run Lancer and you run it the way it's meant to be run, it's 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 a lot of prep. It's more prep than I think most tabletop RPGs, save for stuff like. You know, um, um, Shadow Run or like VTM. It's going to be up there with just sheer amount of sheer shit. I'm doing probably about five to six hours of prep a week. That's a lot of time. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. And I'm going the extra mile because I'm setting up full character dossiers with character sheets and buy and backgrounds and every character has personalized art. I'm going the extra mile. So it's five hours on top of the rest of that which cuts into a lot of time. Yes, it's a lot. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. Technically, I'm doing it the way the game's supposed to. It tells you to do it as well, because that's how all the, the modules are run. But regardless, you don't have to do that part. 
The other thing is the actual layout of a combat, the map layout. Another part of the game's rules is very particular about how combat should feel. Things like spacing and cover especially are super important. And finding maps that work online through any of your various sources is not easy. At least it's not for me. I'm a 100% a perfectionist. When I, when I see a map, it needs to perfectly fit in my head what I want it to look like. Which means I could be searching for a map for a couple hours. <laughs> the easy answer is you could just make it yourself. Well, I don't want to do that. Because that's really, a lot of work. And I got I really, I to think extra hard for that. I really think you need to start. Yeah, but understand, though, if it takes you, let's say, two hours to find a map you like in that two hours, you could have just designed the perfect map yourself. You know, I could like, have. Yes. I think you should start considering that path. And again, they don't have to be super detailed and sexy. They could just be a lot of shapes and lines from an aerial view, as long as they get the general gist, because they're tactical maps, right? The point is to get a certain vibe of like what you can utilize on the terrain. They don't need to be like gorgeous. I know. Or find some sort of map builder tool online that you could do that with, you know, something that I've been looking into that. Yeah, I, something so that if you project get really, sigil, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be your answer per se, but uh, you could. It might not. Yeah, full disclosure, it might not be the answer, but I'm hoping it will alleviate some of my stress. For sure. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, we fucking will. <laughs> and he's crossed. But yes, I think you should consider doing some sort of simplified map designs. You know, kind of like how the old school D&D maps look, used to, like dungeon maps used to look, you know? Actually, they mm -hmm. still do look. Something along the side. Yeah, yeah. Also, in terms of like the it taking, you know, however many hours, I have a feeling that time will decrease as you get a little more accustomed to prepping for the game. I'm feeling a good portion of that is still being new to the to the system itself, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, like things will speed up. I'm I'm curious to see how much they will speed up. Like it might go from five plus hours to like three plus hours. But I, I still think you're going to be doing more than average uh, prep for a typical campaign. Mayhaps. Just because uh, yeah, you have to I think about know. the sit rep rules, you have to think about reinforcements, how many reinforcements you want, and that doesn't even get into like the, the NPCs, which are super complex. I mean, they can be. Because the way the NPCs work is that it's not just a mirror of what you have, right? It's not, you know, in D&D, in &D, you as an evocation wizard can fight a stat block called evocation wizard. Yes. And you have roughly the same abilities, right? In the same way that like a berserker has reckless attack and rage and stuff like that. The NPCs in Lancer are not that. They are very broad ideas for what a role should be fulfilling. So let's say like uh, assassin, assault, barricade, berserker, stuff like that. And those have their own abilities. And you can further develop them by giving them these things called templates, which shift what they are, how they act. So, for example, you could have a assault mercenary and mercenary comes with abilities like opportunist, uh, bounty hunter, efficient killer. And it doesn't have all of them. You pick which ones they have, depending on what that character is like or how they act. So it is very in depth And most guides I've looked at say that each combat should not exceed four separate classes of NPCs. You shouldn't have an assault, a berserker, a reacher, a bastion, a guardian. You shouldn't have a million of them. Roughly, if you're having four separate classes, two of them should be artillery or assault, and you should probably have one controller and one tank, or some sort of variant of that. Mainly assault with some support stuff going on. 
I see. I, I will say, uh, in terms of NPC prep, I have a little hard time taking your word on how long it takes, seeing as you're, uh, you know, you have a bit of a history of overdoing the NPC prep a, a tad. I'm just saying. You know. Yes. For uh, Look, for Hellscapes, <laughs> I did. Correct. Yeah, I'll give you that. Fair enough. Uh, I do wonder, though, like the creators, you know, the designers of the game, I do wonder how long they spend on prep for a session you know like how much time does it take them like curious about that that's a good question i would also like to know the answer frankly because i wonder once you've done a lot of sit like once you've planned a lot of sit reps out how many of them can you kind of lock and load a template in your head to utilize you know Mm -hmm. i don't know hard to say yeah i mean solid maybe and honestly probably I feel like if I was running this game, I would run less combats than the game is suggesting. If I'm being honest, error and valid, but that's just a that's just kind of a gut feel from you describing it. I mean, look, I, yeah. I I want to do that, but I also you know I'm trying to practice what we always preach and run the game rules as right, written right at yeah. the start. And yeah. if I feel like it's just not viable by the time we hit mission like four of 12, then I will start cutting it back for sure. Yeah. But I well, want to at least try to get close to as, as rules as written as possible. Well, the question does is not, I feel like isn't even necessarily, is it viable? But I think the question does become, is the juice, is the, is the juice worth the squeeze? That's what the question is. I was really is. curious to know where you were going with that one. <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? Which is to say like, you know, all the time you're putting into like planning all the combats and stuff does it pay out does it pay off or are you better off doing a less is more kind of approach you know what i mean mm-hmm. and uh it, it, only only you can find the answer for heart of hearts kingdom yeah. hearts kingdom hearts soul Dark. caliber six darkness is eternal <laughs> You oh, I just think of the together. fucking the Zemnis curse. It. Ooh, it's also no one knew what the fuck he said for years until we got an actual sub for. I mean, it. yeah, that that works too. But yeah, do you got any other questions for me now that we're out of notes? Any final thoughts? Questions? I mean, no. I mean, not really. I I mean, at the end of the day, right? The sip rep thing is sort of a is a sort of an organizational system where they have given the GM some mechanics to plan out mission combats that are more interesting than hit bad guy with sword. And I think for a sort of military focused mecha genre game, that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like a decently good execution, but it is maybe a little bit much is sort of the like the vibe I'm getting you know like maybe yep. maybe there's a little bit of a more simple version out there or maybe perhaps the game itself is a little too dense just in its general combat mechanics and that's what makes the by by extension makes the sit rep mechanic stuff feel a little much you know I mean it's definitely dense so yeah I wouldn't disagree with yeah, it's. I mean, it's a fucking. It's a. It's a. It's, it's a dense game uh, for sure. Um, I mean, I. I wasn't kidding. When we first talked about Lancer, I said I read the rules like two or three times, all the way through, and then still have to use it as a reference. Document. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't read it all the way through, obviously, but I do remember reading through the the rules and and having a lot of like. Yeah, a lot of it being like, man, this is huh, yeah, interesting, but. Ooh, not a hundred percent clear on everything. Mm. Um, but also, you know, and that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it do be that way. I, I don't. Yeah, I guess I. I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if I'm looking for that style of game in my life right now. But you know, maybe I never will. Honestly, because I feel like. I feel like hyper crunch. This is this is a tangent, really, but I feel like hyper crunchy games almost are designed for like teenagers, you know, because it's just like 
do homework for the day. Okay, I have nothing. Or in some cases, in some kids' cases, do don't do homework. It's like cool. I'm out of school. I have nothing else to do for the day. Well, I could just hyperfixate and learn this rule system really, really well for no particular reason. Yeah, you know, like I almost feel like as you get older, that kind of thing is just less and less for you. You say that, but that's that's shit Sam still does, despite not recording with us anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true to a certain degree. But like, I don't know, rule systems like RPG rule systems in particular, I feel like. Is its own particular flavor of like, you have to get hyper obsessed and like, yeah, I don't know. Let's put it this way. I think there's a reason that the hobby has trended away from the hyper crunchy game for the most part. And that those have become more rare, you know? Yeah. But it could be crunchier. It could be Shadowrun combat. I don't know if Shadowrun combat's actually any worse from what I've been hearing over over the weeks and months about Lancer. I think they're they're pretty close. I think Lancer's just a better designed game, so it doesn't feel as shitty. But I think the the level of crunch is it I, I don't know, it sounds kind of similar. <laughs> I, I it's definitely we're talking same ballpark, but it's not four rolls to confirm a hit. It's I roll. Do well, I beat your uh, your evasion? Yes. Okay. Do I hit? Do you have armor? Okay. That subtracts from number. Is my weapon armor piercing? It does not subtract from that number. Sure. Although you could argue you just described four steps. <laughs> True, but Shadowrun has four steps that you have to physically interact with. Where Lancer, you look at a sheet and go, well, three steps. One, two, three, four. Three you interact with. But, Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One only requires one roll, basically. And two uh, if you count damage, but like... Yes, yes, yes. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I have any particularly uh, fancy thoughts. I did... I will say I... Maybe my brain is just too... Uh, plagued but i did look at the sit reps thing and kind of think to myself i'm like oh this is kind of like fronts for an individual combat <laughs> which <laughs> yes your brain is absolutely <laughs> good brother. yeah 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 it, it falls because it's essentially at the end of the day an organizational system you know like mm -hmm. that's really what the sit rep thing is uh which is not a bad thing. I just think it's funny that that was how my brain. But look, I've talked about this before. That's how you understand mechanics when you read a bunch of different games is you compare them to previous mechanics that you have already interacted with to help you understand them. You know. Anyway. But yes, I have no I have no particular. Uh, I have no particularly uh, interesting pontifications. But oh, I have one. Actually, I have a final thought of my own. Okay. Uh, uh, up. Because I talked about pilot combat. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the game describes pilot combat what as something you... closer to. Uh, huh? no, never mind. Never mind. Okay, finish that sentence. It, it gives it it describes it as something akin to Blades in the Dark or yes. yeah. a, a, a more narrative focused thing. Yes. But I did it last session and Yes, my players aren't used to it. So, you know, me trying to explain to them, describe what you want to do and the effect you want to have didn't land as hard as I wanted it to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, you also run into the issue where the game also mentions like, you know, do that. But depending on what they ask for, you're, you're you know, because there's no sliding DC, yep. you have to add accuracies and difficulties but players I've noticed from this last combat are it's like oh yeah well I, I could have an, a, a narrative effect to what I want to happen but that's a d6 I have to subtract from every roll and I only have a maximum of a plus 5 and I have to beat a 10 so I only have a 25% chance of success why would I do that if I could just whack for hit points and it's like yeah that's fair that's yeah. very fair yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how to square that circle because, you know, unless I just go, you just have to roll to hit. And if you roll, you know, above or below or whatever, you have the full narrative effect and everything involved. But that's, you know, that's 
essentially a little wacky because it's like, I want to shoot him in the head. And it's like, yeah, but he still has hit points. So, uh huh. Uh huh. I would, I actually would have preferred, there's another variant rule called Bonds and Stress, which works a lot more like Blades in the Dark, where the, the stress is more akin to like harm, and, uh-huh. like different levels of it. But that's more variant rules that I have to have. That I would have to tack on and throw my players, and I just kind of decided. It's not. <laughs> it is, yes. I got to stop at some point. It is. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's a tough one because that's the same D and D problem, right? Where look at all these cool things I could potentially do. You could do anything you want. Yeah, but the most optimal thing is just is just whack. Unfortunately, yeah, it's that's a that's a tough circle to square. It 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 happens in a lot of games. I think the best way to avoid that, though, is basically just to make sure. As the sit reps are trying to do, make sure that the objective is something other than just kill the enemy. That's the best way to avoid that problem. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I I thankfully took that into account because it was basically a holdout. Like the fight just had to last five rounds. They survived, and if the VIP survived, then they won, which is what happened. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the last thing. Okay. Oh, we didn't tell. All right, well, we didn't do it at the beginning, but Josh, tell people what they got to know. Oh, yeah, you should, like, if you got this, if you got this far, you should definitely hit the subscriber follow button on whatever platform you're listening on. You should definitely do that. Yeah. Because I did for core. And if you want, you can follow on Twitter, but like, uh, whatever. It's on fire all the time anyway. <laughs> it is. It is degrading like nobody's business these days. So, you know, uh, pussy in bio is basically the moral of the story. I'm screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's oh, funny. It's funny because it's true. It is funny because it's true. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> my man said pussy in bio. That's fucking wild. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know a better place to leave off uh-huh. on than that. Yeah. I mean, you're not gonna. Yep. Peace, motherfuckers. We're out. <laughs> bye bye.